This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. Hey guys, it's the awesome chat. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter uh, here in Pittsburgh, PA at the Mayhem Studios. This is a show where we uh, talk to people doing awesome things in and around and outside the Berg, or maybe they're bringing some awesome things to Pittsburgh, as we're going to be talking about today. You can check out all the great interviews that we've been doing, a lot of tech, a lot of startups, a lot of uh, different stuff as well, over at awesomecast.net. Look for the awesome chat, and you subscribe to it on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, all those places. It's also on video format on our uh, awesome cast uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook page. Uh, you can check out all that stuff or even check out Tuesday nights. We tend to pop up here. You never know what the interviews, uh, but we'll pop up on Facebook Live as well. You'll get the notification. You can drop in and uh, drop some comments as well or, uh, or stay tuned to Podcast Day. Look out for that every Tuesday night at live.sorgatronmedia.com and watch the tweets. Watch the tweets as well. Uh, today we're getting extreme because that's always what the X stands for and uh, we're going to be combining extreme and something really cool, Pogo. I've seen a little bit of this in person. I, I don't think it was with your group or anything at some of the events in town or, 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 or you know out and about. But we got. I, I'm excited to talk to Nick Ryan. He is the CEO and co-founder of X Pogo. You can check him out at xpogo.com. Coming at us from Manhattan. How you doing? I'm doing great. Excited to be here and uh, chat with you about this new sport. Awesome. You know, I, I you don't know how excited I was when I I, I got the, the email knowing that X Pogo was coming here to Pittsburgh. Tell me, what is X Pogo? So X Pogo is essentially the sport of extreme pogo sticking, where you got guys jumping not one or two inches on the ground like you think of with these classic uh, toy pogo sticks from Walmart or anything. These are guys who are jumping ten feet off the ground, doing flips and all sorts of stunts on new age pogo sticks that don't even have springs in them anymore. They just are completely hollow and you put air inside of them, uh, like you'd pump up a basketball or a, or a bike tire. And uh, it's given way to this uh, underground lifestyle and culture, which is starting to cross into the mainstream. Awesome, awesome. So how long is uh, how long has X Pogo been around, and how did you you know decide to get this together? Were you were you uh, uh, an amateur pogoer at, at, to begin with? How does that work? For sure. Uh, well, yes. Uh, short answer is I was an amateur pogo sticker, probably like most people are. Uh, got a pogo stick for Christmas fifteen years ago, and unlike most people, I decided that I was going to try some tricks on it. Um, you know. First, it's just how many times can you jump, and then it's how high can you jump. And then it's like, let's try to do a bar spin or, or grab the foot peg. And one thing led to another. It became quite an obsession. I began to connect with some other people who uh, were doing the same thing online. And uh, now, 15 years later, we've helped create a sport, a culture, and an entire business around that. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and we're showing some videos here while we're while we're talking with you. Uh, I'm looking at X Pogo Indonesia. I'm seeing Barcelona. This is this become like a pretty worldwide uh, a, a thing here. Yes, I mean we have personally. Our company has made uh, films and done a lot of projects in almost 22 countries now. Uh, there's guys all across the world uh, who picked these things up, ordered them from us or from other manufacturers. It's cool with the age of social media where somebody in New Zealand can have as much awareness of something as somebody, you know, across the street from you. Uh, so the sport has spread uh, globally because of the way that the videos travel. That's awesome. That's awesome. So you mentioned about the, the pogo stick themselves. I want to get a little bit into the, the tech side of it. We like to dig into that kind of stuff. You mentioned there's no springs, no air, like, like or there, it's, it's kind of more air operated than anything else. Like, like. When did this evolution of the pogo stick happen? So the extreme pogo stick just means a pogo stick that can support an adult and that can jump high in the air and is designed for tricks. There are multiple technologies that people have experimented with to make extreme pogo sticks. Some are uh, giant rubber bands that they've stuck inside and they kind of uh, stretch out. Um, Carnegie Mellon actually invented a uh, pogo technology uh, using bows, like a bow and arrow uh, that you would pull back and then it would shoot you up. Uh, the one that has ended up being the most commercially successful and used by the most professional athletes is air. And uh, air compression is pretty simple. You just so like a basketball or a bike tire, you pump air into the top 
And the amount that you put in uh, creates pressure, and then you compress that by jumping on it, and it just shoots you right back up. That's awesome. That's awesome. We're, we're, and we're looking at some of the tricks. So, like, what all can somebody do with a pogo stick? Like, like, uh, are your comp- how are your competitions judged? What's kind of the goals uh, when 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 you guys come to town and uh, these guys are showing off? So, the best way to think of it as just as an extreme sport instrument. So whether you have a bike or a surfboard or a skateboard or a motorcycle, uh, it's, it's the same thing. So you've got handlebars, you've got foot pegs, and you've got air. And you combine those things in, into an infinite uh, you know, possibilities of tricks. Um, in general, uh, people try to just constantly innovate and do new things. So in the beginning, it's as simple as, oh, I want to try to do a backflip. That's what everybody you know wants to see. Do a backflip, do a backflip. So yes, easy. Not easy, but uh, easier than a lot of the uh, technical tricks of, uh, you know, I'm going to grab the peg in this way and throw my foot in this way and spin the body of the stick around before I land. And then as I land, I'm going to begin another combo. And that is a lot more into action sports culture, uh, where the actual entomology of tricks and things comes into play and you create more and more. So essentially, uh, the way our competitions work is we take the sport and we isolate, you know, a few different disciplines inside of it. And then people compete against those disciplines to see who comes out on top. Uh, for the big competition that we're bringing to Pittsburgh next month, we have three uh, parts of our competition. One is high jump. High jump is pretty self-explanatory. You kind of like reverse limbo over a bar, uh, bounce away current world record is 10 feet 6 inches uh, which we're going to try to break uh, then you got best trick also it's pretty self-explanatory people throw down tricks that have never been landed before it's a little bit dangerous a little bit wild uh, but very cool to see and uh, I guess the teaser there I'll say is that we've got a few guys who are going for the first double backflip on a pogo stick uh, it's never been done uh, two rotations one air landing and bouncing away and then you've got freestyle, which is where we have a giant course, if you think like a skate park that we build out. Everybody comes in. They have 60 or 90 second runs to throw everything they have down the line. And they get judged on a few different criteria, and then somebody takes home the title of a world champion. Awesome, awesome. And uh, have you, you guys been to Pittsburgh before? Yeah, so we've we've been there a number of times. I, I went to Carnegie Mellon uh, for undergrad, so I have a history there. Uh, we've brought aspects of our world championships there uh, two times in the past decade, um, and we've done some local demos and things like that. Uh, different groups have brought us in, like the Three Rivers Regatta, mm-hmm. uh, and we've worked uh, with a few different uh, media groups throughout town. Awesome, man. What is this? So, so you're going to be out Swiss, Swissville, PA, at the at the Cary Furnaces, um, and you know, there's a lot of stuff here named after furnaces. Like, uh, you know, what what kind of venue is this that everybody can expect out there? Cary Furnaces, and, and I say this honestly. I mean, we've been to 20 countries. We've seen a lot of stuff, and Cary Furnaces is one of my favorite places in the whole world. Uh, it is a abandoned steel furnace uh, in Swissville right next to Braddock, Pennsylvania, which we have some history with. And it is just this monolith of a thing, you know, that used to employ uh, thousands or, uh, and create uh, so much uh, steel and product. So the Rivers of Steel Group in Pittsburgh has done some great work to reimagine it and revitalize it. And instead of just trying to, you know, protect it and say, nobody go in here, don't, don't touch anything, they do a lot of programming and out of bread. So whether it's like a beer festival or an arts festival or some graffiti work, uh, now us, you know, with an extreme Pogo World Championships, it's an incredibly cool apocalyptic kind of uh, <laughs> space that is just really amazing when you combine it with guys jumping 10 feet in the air on Pogo sticks. That's awesome. That is absolutely awesome. Uh, it, and of course, you know, the, the, around Pittsburgh, you know, you know, there's a lot of these mills around. You know, uh, some not really a lot going on. Some still a little bit of going on. Some get torn down and they turn into uh, movie theaters and stuff. So it's cool to see like <laughs> one standing and kind of being um, um, recognized like that. Yeah, I, I think that's uh, they've done a tremendous job there by maintaining the the skeleton of it and then filling it with new life. 
So if you've ever been on the Steel Phantom waiting to go over the hill and wondering what all that stuff is across the river, you get to go into, not, not that one in particular, because I know that's still an operating U.S. steel plant, uh, but, uh, but uh, uh, you know, that, that, that's cool that you get to get into this and see these vast buildings where, where like, literally the, the, the country was kind of made, you know, out of this, you know, over the years. So awesome. Excellent. It's a lot of fun. It's definitely something that made me uh, stop in my tracks completely to watch you guys uh, uh, have a lot of fun out there. Um, so uh, from that, uh, you know, obviously, you know, this is a fairly accessible sport as in, you know, much like skateboarding. Is it, uh, but pogo sticks aren't like a real high-end thing, like some new technology into it. But but what's kind of the barrier entry if I said, you know, I, myself or the kids in the neighborhood want to get into uh, 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 pogoing tricks? It's a great question. If you think like 10, 20 years ago, there was just one rung on the ladder. There was no ladder. You just go to Walmart, you pick up a pogo stick for 40, 50 bucks. It's a toy. Nobody can jump on it except for your 10 year old and they try it out and then it's done. Now today there's like 15 rungs on that ladder. So depending on how much you weigh, how tall you are, uh, you know, how wild you are, you can pick up a stick that kind of suits your need. So I would suggest, well, we, uh, self-promotion, sell all of the best sticks from all the manufacturers in the world. So you can go on our site and say, okay, uh, you know, maybe I'm 20 years old or I'm 16 years old or I'm 10 years old and I weigh this much and, I, you know, I just want to try to get into it. And so we'll get something for you that uh, really fits nicely. But it is accessible because the best pogo stick in the world that you can buy that anyone's riding is like $400, which first you're like, wait, that's $400 for a pogo stick. But then if you compare that to, you know, a mountain bike or, you know, a really nice motorcycle or even a really nice skateboard, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the best thing that exists and you can, you can pick it up, you know, for that much. And all the guys you see in all these videos, that's what they're riding. That's awesome. We're showing a few clips here from um, you guys at Stav and Pogo Palooza in, in uh, Pittsburgh in 2014. Uh, some great, great stuff. So uh, cool, cool. Uh, what, what are some tips for for first timers, like you know, to get on there, other than equipment? I would say that for the average person, if you put in 30 to of work, you will get past that uh, initial barrier of just going on, and then suddenly you'll recognize the full potential so i always say you know find a stick that suits you you don't have to go on the big crazy thing right away uh keep your feet centered keep it close to your waist by you know to see how many bounces you can get mm -hmm. and just like when you're trying or ride a skateboard or something like that you fall down a few times then it'll click and then you can go anywhere with it i mean honestly i mean that literally and that you can learn all these tricks, but there's so many kids today now that get on it, become talented, get signed by, you know, a company like ours and then travel the entire world, you know, and <laughs> meeting people on a pogo stick, uh, cause it's an emerging sport. There's a lot of opportunity to, to get into it and then be near the top. That's awesome. Uh, I, I'm always amazed uh, going into this. And the next thing you know, you're doing flips. Wear a helmet. Also, definitely wear a helmet with this thing, <laughs> uh, as with any helmet. of these kinds of sports, right? I do agree. <laughs> awesome. So you guys are coming here in Pittsburgh. What are the dates again? Yes. What can people check out? How can they get, get involved? So the key info is July 8th and 9th, we're going to be in Cary Furnaces, uh, which is in Swiss Vale, in minutes. Uh, from you know, middle of the heart of Pittsburgh there. And at night, you're going to see the best trick, high jump, and freestyle competitions with the best 40 to 50 athletes from across the world. Awesome. And if people want to check you out otherwise uh, and all the other places you're going to check it, you're going to be at? Well, if you go to xpogo.com, we have an events uh, page, and we do over 200 events a year. So every two, we are somewhere across the world, across the world, whether it's NBA finals that we just did, uh, you know, or touring throughout the Middle East, uh, we do a lot of stuff. So you can check it out on there. Um, and then Pogopalooza, which is the name of our world championships, that's the big event that you'll see, which is in uh, about a month, July 8th and 9th. Awesome. Go check that out. It's a lot of fun. And of course, check them out, especially if you're in the Pittsburgh area and, uh, and, and check out that event out. 
too. Uh, I know our friends at uh, yajagoff.com also got a chance to talk to you guys, so keep an eye out for a video from them as well. You know how Jagoff gets. He was the first interview here, actually, uh, on on this program, and uh, way almost a year ago, I guess it was, and uh, it'll be cool to see um, see what he gets to do on a pogo stick, I'm hoping. So, thank you so much, xpogo.com, the uh, CEO, co-founder, Nick Ryan, joining me. Thank you so much, uh, Nick, for joining hey. us. I say expogo.com, and I uh, hope to see some of you guys out there at the carry furnace. I want to see what they've done with the place. So, And, of course, uh, check out everything at awesomecast.net. This and so many other interviews. Subscribe to us on wherever you like to uh, watch the videos um, or or uh, uh, listen to your podcast or whatever the case may be. And uh, please tell your friends, and please uh, check out the Patreon for the main show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Thank you to our awesome guest, Nick Ryan. Uh, you have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. 